Peter Pan has got to be one of the most popular characters in Western culture. Created by Scottish novelist and playwright J.M. Barrie, and most famously portrayed again in the 1953 animated Disney film, this forever young and flying boy is a friend to fairies and the courageous leader of a group of boys who wound up in Neverland. That's right, the Lost Boys. Peter's gang of loyal counterparts that help him protect Neverland from stinky grown-ups. Especially the dreaded pirate Captain Hook and his crew. But did you ever wonder what happened to Peter's accomplices if they dare grow older? Could Peter Pan actually be killing off the Lost Boys? Whoa, wait, what? Peter Pan? The eternal 12-year-old who spends his days flying around with the help of pixie dust and a magical fairy best friend? The whole coercing children out of their bedrooms to run away with him is a little creepy. But what makes you think he would murder his best friends and loyal followers? Well, according to this theory, the idea comes from a line in the book Peter and Wendy by J.M. Barrie. The line reads, The boys on the island vary, of course, in numbers, as they get killed and so on. I mean, I get it, fighting ruthless pirates is sort of a workplace hazard when you're a lost boy. Not all of them make it back alive, I'm sure. I mean, just ask Rufio. Ooh, that hurt to say. But the quote goes on to say, And when they, the Lost Boys, seem to be growing up, which is against the rules, Peter thins them out. I don't think he's cutting Lost Boys from the team like cheerleaders from a squad. It's possible that Peter is the only one with this magic immortality. So if one of his Lost Boys starts to age, through no fault of their own, what could happen? How would someone like poor Toodles exist in the world of Peter Pan's Lost Boys? One day he falls out of his baby basket, and suddenly this cool older kid asks him to join forces. I mean, at first it probably sounds pretty awesome. He gets to wear like this super cool skunk outfit all day, and the only rule is to never grow up. Which is lots of fun at first, but when he eventually becomes older than Peter, and is no longer useful to him? What, Peter just like, betrays you? Do you end up sleeping with the TikTok crocodile? Let's take a step back and look at the original source for this theory. Barry is the original creator of Pan's character, whose first ever appearance was in the 1902 book, The Little White Bird. In this story, Barry explains that all infants begin their lives as part bird, who start to become completely human once they are given to their parents. And they completely lose their bird part once they begin to grow up. Upon hearing this as a seven-day-old baby, Peter flew away from his home, not quite understanding that he wasn't literally a bird and couldn't actually fly. But since he has complete faith in his flying abilities, Peter flies all the way to Kensington Gardens, where the fairies live. When he is told that he is not actually a bird, Peter loses the ability to fly and is trapped in Kensington Gardens, and remains betwixt and between being a human and a magical bird-like creature. When he is granted the ability to fly again, he flies back to his old home, only to find that his mother has a new child and has barred the windows he once escaped from. In the play Peter Pan, Peter tells Wendy a story that echoes the one in Kensington Gardens. He tells her, I thought like you that mother would always keep the window open. And then I flew back, but the window was barred. For mother had forgotten all about me and there was another boy sleeping in my bed. Could it be that Peter's hatred for grown-ups actually comes from some deeply rooted mommy issues? And that's why good old Nibs, Toodles, and the rest of the Lost Boys might as well walk the plank once they hit the ripe old age of 13. Between Kensington Gardens, the play, the book, and the Disney film, we've got quite a lot to look at. In the play, Mrs. Darling mentions that she has heard of Peter Pan before, but as a fairy-like spirit who accompanied children part of the way to death, so that they would not be frightened. Wait, so it's starting to sound more like Peter helps dead children, not kills them when they get too old. And if it's really true that he actually accompanies the spirits of dead children, could it be instead that all of the Lost Boys are dead? Let's look back at the original quotes from the play and the book by J.M. Barry. Mrs. Starling essentially refers to Peter as the angel of death. And in Kensington Gardens, he is quite literally the angel of death. I mean, he 
fairies, dead children who get lost in the park or fall out of their prams. And it's mentioned in both Fairies' work and the Disney film that the Lost Boys are children who fell out of their prams, which is why they're all Lost Boys and not girls because girls are too smart to fall out of their prams. But there are also a lot of connections that can be drawn between a heaven-like place and Neverland. Eternal youth, magic driven by imagination, the ability to fly. It's basically the best place the spirit of a kid could eternally rest. So far, this isn't looking so great for Peter. Or is it? We are overlooking a major part of the play here. Barry's play, Peter Pan, The Boy Who Never Grew Up, mentions that Lost Boys can grow up and they can get killed. In fact, at the end of the play, the Lost Boys return to England with Wendy, John, and Michael and they all grow up. Dead children can't exactly grow up. J.M. Barry argues that this Peter Pan is not canon in the Peter Pan verse. So that means that the bird boy of Kensington Gardens should have nothing to do with the Peter Pan we know and love. So, on the plausibility meter, I give the Peter Pan Conspiracy four TikTok crocodiles out of five. Or maybe I should give it one TikTok crocodile out of five. I don't know, what do you guys think? Make sure you download the Channel Frederator app. I've started a poll on there and you guys can decide what you give this conspiracy. With the newest season underway, it's easy to say that Rick and Morty has quickly become one of the best adult animated shows on TV right now. Not only is it totally hilarious and mostly improvised, it's got a surprisingly deep and complex plot. And naturally, with any show involving time travel or dimension hopping, several theories have come up about alternate realities. But this one is probably the biggest. Is the Morty we know and love not Rick's first Morty? Could Rick's original Morty actually be evil Morty?